Well, I, I must, uh, in these otherwise light times, talk about the heavy matter uh, of uh, the US slowdown and what, what will weigh down the US economy as we go into the first half of next year. Uh, a US recession has probably been the most widely, universally uh, and longest lasting forecast uh, in, uh, in recent memory. Uh, uh, the media has been forecasting a US recession all year long. Uh, and uh, some people are saying about terrible things that uh, 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 may be awaiting for us. Uh, so I thought I would uh, talk today about uh, uh, blue chip consensus, best available forecast of what's actually going to happen uh, as we move into 2023. Uh, and indeed, uh, it does look like uh, we are going to go into a US recession, um, but it will be uh, one of the mildest recessions that we have uh, um, experienced in the last 40 years. Um, and this is really because of, we've got two major influences opposing each other in the US economy at the same time. Uh, the, for the full year, um, uh, the full year may still have a very slight positive growth number because uh, uh, the best available estimates uh, seem to have a very broad range of, of growth for US uh, GDP between uh, plus 0 0.3 and negative 0 0.5. So a very slight positive growth or a very slight negative growth. But what seems to be agreed is that the first two quarters of US GDP will be negative. Uh, and what we anticipate is in the first quarter, uh, GDP will fall by about 1.2%, perhaps a touch more. And in the second quarter, GDP will fall by about 1% plus a, a touch more. But by the time we get into the second half of the year, uh, US GDP turns around uh, and becomes positive, uh, with the first positive number being a little over 1% in the, in the third quarter. Now, why is that happening? Uh, that's happening because you've got two entirely different influences fighting against each other. You have the result of uh, what the Fed has been doing all year in terms of lifting rates. Uh, that is overwhelmingly negative um, because as the Fed has lifted short rates, that has generated a, a sell-off uh, in long-term interest rates. And as uh, US housing is funded by long-term borrowings, mortgage rates have been rising during the year and as, as a result of that increase in mortgage rates rising during the year, the amount of uh, housing construction, residential construction, or residential fixed investment, as it's referred to in the GDP numbers, has started to fall and now is falling very, very uh, heavily. And it will continue to fall heavily. Uh, it fell heavily this quarter, uh, in the quarter just passed. It will fall heavily uh, in the quarter we are in at the moment. It will fall heavily in the first quarter of uh, next year, in the second quarter of next year, and will continue to fall until the third quarter of next year. Um, and if there wasn't anything going else uh, in the US economy, this would generate a housing type slump, perhaps as bad as uh, some of the worst we had uh, in the beginning of the century, but that's not happening. And the reason that's not happening is because of uh, what we've observed in the world economy, and that is the shortage of energy, uh, and the fact that uh, the, the US happens to be the world's largest oil and gas producer. So what happens on the other side of that is pretty much from the, not in the first quarter, but as you get into the second quarter, you start to see an enormous surge in oil and gas investment and increase in production. Uh, and that accelerates at a very dramatic rate uh, in the second quarter and continues to accelerate at a very rapid rate for another four quarters after that. So what you've got is opposed to a quite uh, dramatic housing slump, you've got a very dramatic uh, uh, oil and gas uh, production boom. 
and that oil and gas production boom swings around the path of U.S. Uh, national economy, uh, U.S. national income, and means that you start to get it start to get small. Uh, quarterly growth numbers of about one percent from the third quarter, and they accelerate as you go into the, into the next quarter to about two percent, two and a half percent annualized. So. Um, uh, the Fed will do its, uh, do what it's doing in terms of increasing rates and continuing to increasing rates, in spite of the fact we've had a slightly positive uh, inflation number, um, and will continue to increase rates early next year. But uh, the enormous increase in demand for oil and gas is what's going to save the US economy and probably be very handy uh, for us as well. On the issue of inflation, um, from the, the Fed presentations I've been looking at um, on the web, the issue really is that, um, uh, yes, they expect inflation to fall as, it, as CPI inflation is topping out and uh, the PCE deflator is also rolling over, which is w what they look at a bit more than CPI. Uh, but what they expect to happen is that it will, it will fall but then get stuck, and it will get stuck at around about the level of wages growth. And so the problem then is what they what the Fed believes it has to do is increase unemployment, put downward pressure on wages growth, get wages growth down to a number with a three in front of it, uh, instead of uh, uh, a four or a five in front of it where it currently is. And when they've got a number of three in front of it, then with a one percent productivity, they can maintain inflation at about two percent. So. Uh, they think that they need to uh, continue with tight monetary policy because they don't want uh, high wages growth to generate uh, extended inflation. Um, but uh, we will have the much promised US recession next year, uh, but it will be one of the mildest uh, recessions uh, we've experienced in the last 40 years. <laughs>